Hello, and welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we'll explore a powerful tool called the Corrective Smooth Modifier, which helps fix mesh deformations that often occur after character rigging and animation. This modifier is especially useful for softening harsh creases around joints like elbows and knees. Let's take a closer look at how it works. As you can see in the scene, we already have a pre-rigged character. Let's start by selecting the armature and switching to pose mode. Now select the left forearm bone and press R, then Z, to rotate it about 90 degrees. Next, let's temporarily hide the armature by clicking the eye icon in the outliner. If we zoom in on the elbow area, we can clearly see deformation issues, sharp bends, and unnatural creasing. To fix this, we first need to select the mesh object we want to apply the modifier to. So let's switch back to object mode. Since the entire character is a single mesh, we'll select the whole character. Now go to the Modifiers tab and add a Corrective Smooth modifier. As you can see, the harsh deformation at the elbow has been softened a bit using the modifier. You can check the difference by clicking the monitor icon in the modifier panel to toggle its visibility in the viewport. The Corrective Smooth modifier works by referencing the undeformed state of the mesh. It detects areas that have become highly distorted and smooths them out to correct the shape. It's typically used after the armature modifier, since bone movements can sometimes cause unwanted deformations, especially around joints. Now let's look at the modifier settings. Factor value controls the strength of the smoothing effect. A value of 0.0 has no effect, while 1.0 applies maximum smoothing. In most cases, values between 0.5 and 0.9 give natural-looking results. Be careful with values above 1.0 as they can distort the mesh in unwanted ways. Repeat value sets how many times the smoothing is applied. Higher repeat values mean smoother results. Typically, 5 to 20 iterations are enough. Scale value increases the overall strength of the modifier. If you notice volume loss in the mesh, increasing this value slightly can help compensate for it. Smooth type lets you choose the smoothing method. There are two options. The simple method relaxes the vertices based on their connected edges. The length weight method applies smoothing while taking the distance between surrounding vertices into account. It usually gives more natural results, but it's a bit slower to compute. If you check the only smooth box, you'll preview only the smoothing effect without any correction applied. This is helpful to understand how the smoothing is working before the actual correction is applied. When this option is enabled, the modifier affects the entire mesh with basic smoothing and the correction part is disabled. If you're unsure whether the modifier is smoothing too much or too little, enabling only smooth allows you to test and fine-tune the effect. Keep in mind, this is only for testing and preview. For the final result, make sure to leave it unchecked. The Pin Boundaries option keeps the outer edge vertices fixed during smoothing. If you don't want the border areas of your mesh to be affected or pulled out of place, you should enable this option. As you can see here, when Pin Boundaries is disabled, the upper arm is also affected by the modifier, causing the mesh to stretch outside the T-shirt. But when we enable this option, the upper arm stays within the shirt as the boundary vertices are locked in place. This is especially useful for keeping outer edges like wrists, ankle cuffs, or collar lines from distorting due to smoothing. The vertex group option allows the modifier to affect only a specific part of the mesh. For example, this lets us apply separate corrective smooth modifiers for just the elbow or knee areas. Let's try it. Select the armature and go back to pose mode. Now select the shin bone and rotate it about 90 degrees. Then select the character mesh again and switch to object mode. As you can see, the corrective smooth modifier is currently affecting both the knee and the elbow, helping to smooth out the harsh deformations. But let's say you only want to apply the modifier to the knee area and not affect the elbow. Press tab to enter edit mode and press Z to switch to wireframe view. Now select the knee area of the character. Go to the Object Data Properties tab, and in the Vertex Groups panel, click the plus icon to create a new vertex group. 
Let's name this group Knee Smooth Corrective. Set the weight value to 1.0 and then click Assign to assign the selected vertices to this group. Now switch back to Solid View and Object Mode. Go to the Modifier tab and from the Vertex Group drop-down, select the group we just created, and that's it! Now the Corrective Smooth modifier only affects the knee, and you can clearly see the harsh deformation returning at the elbow. If you click the two arrow icon, Invert button, next to the Vertex Group field, the effect will be reversed, it will now affect the elbow instead of the knee. Finally, let's take a look at the Rest Source setting. This option lets you choose how the modifier determines the mesh's non-deformed reference state. Original Coordinates uses the original, unmodified version of the mesh as a reference. In our example, the character mesh has both a mirror modifier and a subdivision surface modifier applied before the corrective smooth. Since these modifiers change the mesh topology and increase the vertex count, Blender displays the warning, Original Vertex Count Mismatch. This warning means that the current mesh has a different number of vertices compared to its original state, and the modifier can no longer properly match them. That's because original coordinates expects the mesh to have the same vertex count as the very first version before any modifiers were applied. To fix this, let's switch the rest source from original coordinates to bind coordinates. If you have modifiers like subdivision surface or mirror before the corrective smooth modifier, you need to click the bind button to store the current shape as the rest pose. Otherwise, the corrective smooth may not work correctly. So let's click bind and then switch to pose mode and bend the elbow. As you can see, the corrective smooth modifier is now working properly. If you switch back to original coordinates, you'll notice that the modifier no longer has any visible effect because the vertex count no longer matches the original mesh. The corrective smooth modifier is a powerful solution, especially when dealing with quick rigs or artifacts caused by automatic weight painting. With the right settings, it helps your character deform more cleanly and naturally. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. Don't forget to subscribe for more Blender lessons. See you in the next video.